welcome to the Pearl Up and Die podcast. My name is Jaden, and I'm going to be your host for the next little bit. So hopefully, grab a cup of something yummy and some knitting, or crochet, and uh, stay with me. So where you can find me online is on, um, I'm pretty active on Ravelry as Creations on a Whim. You can also find me on Instagram as Little Prairie Pearl or at Midnight Cravings. And um, Etsy, I've got a little shop, littleprairiepearl.etsy.com, and I also have a shop that I share with my sister. Um, we sell hand-dyed yarn, and you can find us at midnitcravings.etsy.com. So, it's been about three or four weeks since the last time I podcast. Um, we had a really insane, busy, busy a few weeks. Um, we ended up having our first anniversary for our Midnight Cravings. Etsy shop and so that was really fun um, it did a lot it was a lot busier than we expected um, so it took us a little while we were a little bit frantic plus we released a special colorway which I forgot to bring some with me but um, anyways doesn't matter and so it was just it was a lot of fun so we had a really busy time with that and then Tara went away on vacation so she was away for her anniversary with her husband and so that left me in charge of the shop. So it was a little bit, um, it was a little bit hectic. And so I didn't have a chance to do much for podcasting because we just had one thing after the other uh, rolling down the line. So I apologize. But in the meantime, I've had a bit of time to knit. And hopefully you guys have too. So I've finished a few things. I've bought a few things. I drank lots of coffee. I swore a couple times. <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> It's hard work. You know what? I just truly appreciate anybody who runs a business on their own. Um, Tara and I were lucky that we always had a business partner um, when we run our business. So we always have ideas. We can bounce ideas off of each other and we can uh, share the workload. She was awake for a week and a half. And yeah, it is a ton of work to run a business by yourself. So any of you out there who are makers and dyers and you have a shop and it's you by yourself, well... I feel for you. It is crazy tons of work. And I mean, I knew it was a lot of work before, but it really kind of opened my eyes as to how exhausting it is to not have somebody to share the workload of the dyeing and the winding yarns and prepping the yarn to get dyed and the, just all of it. It's a lot of work. And I just didn't really know that side. So anyways, all that to say, I'm very glad Tara's home. Yay, Tara! <laughs> Don't ever do that again. No more vacations for you. <laughs> oh, well. But So, anyways, today I'm drinking some coffee out of this awesome mug. Yawn is my silent screen for coffee. And I don't know why, but today I am just completely, like, so, so tired. My eyes are tired. They're droopy. Plus, the sun is, like, shining right in my eyes again. So... It was cloudy earlier today, and I was like, oh, perfect, I can podcast, and no, the sun came out, which normally I shouldn't complain about in the wintertime, but, you know, it throws a kink into into my podcasting, because I can't see, and then I feel like I'm squinting at everybody. But anyways, yeah, coffee, coffee, don't spill it, coffee with cream, and yeah, I have no snacks. Because I can't eat and talk anyway, so no point in having snacks. I am surrounded. I am surrounded with stuff right now. I feel like a pig. I've got new yarn. I've got fabric. I've got all the things. So hopefully I can get through this. I'll try not to re-ammer on too, too much. I know I usually do and probably drives everybody a bit crazy, but well. Oh, well. <laughs> More coffee tea. That's exactly what I need. So, what should I start with? Let's see if I can shake a little bit. Earthquake! Put my coffee down. Hopefully my whole setup doesn't collapse now. So, let's start with this. It's a big honking shawl in the room. This thing is massive. I don't know if I want to take it off because I'll never get it back on. But, well, I'll show you because you cannot show the mon like the size of this thing without taking it off. But this is a, the mystery knit along I alluded to last time I podcast where I was saying that I couldn't show it because it would be spoilers. 
So what it is, is the My Sister Shawl by Cozy Up with a Stitch and Sisters. So it's four sisters out of Grand Prairie, um, Alberta, Canada. Um, there's Jamie, Sarah, um, Katie, and Christina. And they're all knitters. And so they collaborated amongst themselves to make the shawl. And it, each part is something they really love. So it's, yeah. And it's three colors. Uh, yeah, three colors and all the things. So I will show it off for you. I mean, when I say this thing is big, I mean like 10 foot long big. It was a hundred and... No, so it was like nine and a half. It was 108 inches by 24 inches. Oh, my necklace is all over the place. So, yes, super beautiful. My, oh, look, I was like so warm. <laughs> it's all like red and blotchy. Oops. I won't be wearing the shawl after all because it's just too hot in my house. Okay, so the way that the pattern worked is you started in the middle, you knit one half, and then you knit the other. So I'm going to show you. So I started with this color, which is Black Cherry. It's my own um, Terranize hand-dyed yarn. So it's Midnight Cravings. This is our sweet sock base, and the color is Black Cherry. And as you can see, I wear this color a lot, so this was like the perfect choice uh, for me. So it starts out um, in the middle. And then you work this and then you're doing a color change right in here so kind of you fade it in oh i did something wrong Ooh, look at that no i didn't okay good Ooh, thought i did but i don't think i did but anyways it's just because it looks different stretched out now now that it's blocked the stripes look a little wider so anyways so you go there and then you do some eyelets and then you do this lace which i absolutely loved the lace was my favorite part of this shawl love it look how beautiful that is i can't even take credit it was their pattern i just knit it how they told me so then after that you start decreasing so then you get these long skinny points so the problem is is that after this part you're supposed to go into your your main color again and then it basically looks like this but down to the end so it's like the skinny triangle well I didn't have enough yarn I did have one end completely done all the way to the tip in the red or in the black cherry but then I only had this little tiny ball left over I had about 15 grams when I started the other end and within a few bit like a little bit I only have four grams left and I needed about 30 or 35 grams to finish the whole end so I had to do some major issue like I had to figure out how I was going to do this because I wasn't going to win yarn chicken. I was going to be like way off. So I ended up ripping out the one whole end. So I had a bunch, like two, then I had two balls of, of the black cherry. And then I just started hacking the pattern. And if you guys watch Cozy Up, um, their podcast, Cozy Up, Cozy Up with the Stitch and Sisters podcast on YouTube, so if you don't watch them, look them up. Some of you will probably are already familiar with them. But anyways, they are very much like, if it doesn't work for you, hack the pattern. Like they're not, you don't have to stick to their exact pattern. So I did. So I pulled back my original, the first side down to here. And then I started like reintroducing. So I reintroduced this color. Um, yeah. So anyway, sorry to my colors. This is black cherry. Then this variegated speckly color right here is called Fruit Stand. And then the this peachy color is called Bellini Fizz. So yeah, so I pulled it back to here. Then I brought in some of the Fruit Stand again. And then I melted it into that. And then I did this lace again. So I had to do lace on a diagonal. So that was a little tricky. But I mean, I just kind of worked, worked it out as I went. And I... A couple of people have asked how I did it and I just I don't I don't really know <laughs> I figured out how many stitches a repeat was and then I started it when it was fairly even and then I just the decreases are always on the one side so I knew on this straight side so I just basically counted my repeat from this edge doot, doot, you know and then I decreased one so I knew where my repeats always gonna were line up that doesn't really make any sense but this is the best I can do to explain. And then I 
went back into fruit stamp, then back into black cherry for the tips. So, ready for the length of this thing? Here's the tip. And it goes, so my arm is fully out, and then it goes, there's the middle, and then it goes, and then it goes. So, it is like, <laughs> like crazy long, I get lost in here. It's really big, but it is squishy and I love it. I wear a ton of this burgundy color and I wear a lot of this like peachy coral color. And then this is one of my favorite colors that we've ever dyed is this fruit stand color. And so I don't know, they just screamed, knit me. So I'm like, okay. So yeah, so the struggle is this thing is massive and gorgeous, but it is, it's one that you kind of have to stand in the mirror a little bit and put on to make it look, because you want to show off all the parts, right? You want the lace to show and you want the mesh to show and everything. So yeah, sort of like that. There's a thousand of different ways. They had a fun hashtag, so I would check it out. Go call. It's how I wear my sister shawl hashtag on Instagram. So if you're wanting to have a look at all the different ways that people are wrapping it up and stuff like that, that's a fun one to watch. <laughs> Oops, excuse me. Follow, I mean. So yeah, so my sister shawl. So it was a five week uh, mystery knit along. So we didn't know what we were making. We knew it was a shawl. We knew it was three colors. We knew it wasn't an egg. I was quite disappointed. I totally think an egg shaped shawl would be a completely unique thing, but <sighs> disappointment. It's a trapezoid parallelogram. I have no idea. It's longer on one edge and then it angles in like this and then it's short on the one. Well, not short. It's like six feet. Then those two feet and then so it's 10 feet altogether. It's crazy long. But yeah, it took almost three full skeins. So the skeins that I used, um, like I said, it's our sweet sock yarn that we have. It's about 425 yards per ball, and I used up almost all of it. So they were, it's a big shawl. Literally playing yarn chicken, I had maybe a yard or two left of the fruit stand colorway. So I uh, hear I was playing yarn chicken with the, the, the black cherry, so I pulled it all back. Then I had lots of that left over, and it was the... <laughs> It was so close that I was looking for scraps of yarn. Like I texted Tara, I'm like, please tell me we have like five grams of it left over when we made minis or something. Just do we have any like, but I prevailed and I won, but I was really sweating bullets there for a while. <laughs> but anyways, beautiful shawl. If you guys haven't knit it, I highly recommend putting it on your to-do list. Um, you know, for being a three color shawl, you'd think that it would take forever, but the clues, they broke them up into, like I said, five clues. Um, and each clue was really, really manageable. Within a couple of days, you were done your clue. Uh, so it just, it didn't, I mean, some days I was knitting till Saturday, but I kind of, you know, not knit on it much during the week because I was busy or didn't have much time or whatever, or I knew it wasn't going to take me that long. So I just kind of pushed it to the end. But um, yeah, it's, for being a three color shawl and three full skeins, it's surprisingly fast to knit up. So really highly recommend that pattern. So good job, girls. Highly, highly enjoyed knitting it. And I'm very much looking forward to their new design, which is called the Katie shawl. And it's a two skein shawl or five or three or scrappy or however. So if you, yeah, go check that one out too. Uh, it's called the Katie shawl or Katie shawl or Katie's shawl. I'll link it below. <laughs> More coffee. So with that, I have one other thing. So last week I was talking about this yarn. It's just like red and it's got these bright red pops and stuff like that. And I wanted to have a, a little hat knit for my daughter uh, to go with her dressy jacket or her, like her good jacket for when we go out. Um, and I got that, this yet red yarn, um, and it is by the Fiber Co. It's called Erin Moore. 
and Don Donegal Heritage, and the colorway is Ruari, R-U-A-R-I. Let's see if I can get that to right there. Ruari. So, anyways, I quite enjoyed it. It is, let me see what the, what the makeup of it is. It's 175 yards, 80% wool, 10% silk, 10% cashmere, made in Ireland. So, it's really quite nice. I enjoyed it. I made a, did make a hat, but I think I'm going to frog it. Um, it just, I'll show you here. Okay, so this is the hat. The pattern that I used is called Zoe, or Zoe, I don't know, it doesn't really say how to pronounce it. Um, it's by Alexandra Davidoff. Um, I'll link to the thing below or whatever, but it's a beautiful hat. We have done this hat as a sample in our shop for when we have, like, do sales and stuff like that. I just love this pattern so much. It's a beautiful, beautiful knit hat. But the problem is, is yarn to needle to pattern not compatible or something. I can't even talk English today. I'm tired. But anyways, I think I picked maybe the wrong yarn. Maybe not the wrong yarn, but I think I picked the wrong needle. So it's a little dense. And it just stands up on its own. It's not drapey and soft and squishy. So I was hoping that it would be more like a little slouch hat for Avalyn. Um, and it just kind of stands up on her head and just keeps its weird shape. So it doesn't fit, it doesn't fit right and it doesn't look that great. And she hates it. It was like, she's like, why didn't you just knit me a regular toque? So she just wants a beanie. So I'm like, fine. So what happens when mommy Jai is making something nice for you? She's usually pretty grateful. She's very knit worthy, but just, I, yeah, as soon as she put it on, I'm like, oh, that's not going to work. And unfortunately for me, well, fortunately for me, but unfortunately in this case, I weave my ends in really, really well. I cannot see for the life of me where I wove that end in. And it's not super washed, so it's probably like, you know, sticking to itself pretty good. So I'm going to have to snip the yarn at the top of the crown. And pull it out and I like the pattern enough I like I would knit it again in a different yarn but the problem is is I can't just pull it back down some because if I do the these cables aren't gonna line up nice to do the decreases you can see how these these they flare off right and then they become the decreases so it gets this really pretty pattern on the top but if I start the decreases in a different spot, it's going to not look right. So I'm going to just have to frog it and start again. So that's a little disappointing. But yeah, like I said, we have Tara knit this for a sample and it gets a lot of attention and it is absolutely stunning. So I will knit the hat again with a different yarn, possibly for myself, and just knit a simple beanie for Avelyn with that. So... That was whip number two, no, FO number two. And as for whips, I haven't been uh, working on very much. I have one big project that I decided to work on, and I'm being monogamous because it's a big hunk and shawl, and I want to have it done for one of the events that we're going to be um, vending at this year. So without further ado... Have a couple more sips of coffee. Put my coffee over there because it doesn't shake the camera then. But anyways, this is what I'm working on. Can you tell what it is? It's already really big. <laughs> it's just barely, I'm maybe halfway through it. Maybe, maybe, maybe that's a little generous, generous estimate, but knitting a fade so this is the find your fade by Andrea Mowry and I swore I would never knit one I had absolutely zero desire to knit a fade I was like it's too big it's too much knitting it's garter and it's lace and I just don't want to do any of it 
And then I found my fade. I found yarn. It's not a fade in that like one color is really gonna like slowly graduate. It's gonna be like a color block fade, which I think is just as beautiful when I was looking at some of the, um, like lots, I was looking through the projects and they're just as beautiful as the ones that really slowly fade one into the other. So I thought, well, let's do it. So, so like I said, this is going to be for an event that we're going to be vending at. So I wanted a big, like eye catching display item. And so find the front side. Okay. So, so I'm only doing five colors. So nor the pattern calls is written for seven, but you can change it up and do it whenever. So I combined clue a, or not clue, um, color A and color B. So this is like a big section. So this is our yarn. It's on a new base that is yet unnamed and we're waiting for it to come in. So we were testing it out and, um, yeah, so it hasn't arrived yet. So this isn't available in our shop, this space, but anyways, I'll tell about it. It's hundred percent Merino yarn superwash. It's absolutely slinky and soft and squishy. Like some of the softest I've ever felt. It's gorgeous. Anyways, so this colorway is smoke and mirrors. Then it fades. This is the only part that it really like does a fade is right here. This is our new color that's going to be released in March. So I'm not going to talk much about it but it's a speckle and then I'm fading into harvest which is like a golden or like a yellow so it's this here it's harvest that shows up pretty dang good actually so that is it here so it's like this beautiful mustardy color it's really tonal um yeah so now and all the other thing I did about this pattern is I um change the decrease so her decrease has you doing like slip slip one knit two and then pass the slip over or it's in slip two and pass anyways I don't like how it it just looked uneven so I did a central double decrease to give it like a more pronounced spine and it's a completely like it's even on both sides and I really 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 like it really so so this is the third color obviously Oh five, so it'll have. Oh my goodness, it's all tangled. So I'm just done the melt, what she calls the melt, and now I'm into the solid garter, and then I'll do a, a little bit of the mesh, and then a little bit more garter, and then I'll be ready for my next two because I want the bulk of it to be these colors at the end. I just want a little bit of that golden color. So the next color that's going to melt into it is called Why Not? And then Velvet Plum. So these two will actually melt really nicely together too because they're they're really close. This one's got a slight bit more pinky undertones and it's a little bit lighter and this is a deeper one. But yeah, so it'll be these three. Boom, boom, and boom. I really, really like that. So that is my big, huge shawl project. And I need to have that done. Not for a little while. We have a show coming up in, in April in Saskatoon, and then we have one in September that we are going to be doing. And yeah, so this is kind of, sorry, I'm just trying to wrap it all up again because it's like the balls of yarn are everywhere. Oh, goodness. So. Yeah, so I've been pretty monogamous with this one. And actually, it's a very surprisingly quick knit. And I thought for sure I was putting it off. And I was like, no, it's going to take forever. And I'm not going to like it. Love it. I love the knit. I would, you know what, I'm not bored of it yet. And I've got quite a lot done. So I could almost safely say that once this is done, I would knit another one, but probably not for a long time. And it would be one that would be for myself and not for the shop, but I love this one. I will wear it too. So awesome. Oh, and I was going to talk about what needles I'm using. So these are Chow Goos. They are a 3.5 millimeter. And yeah, I was telling you on my last one, I really love the Chow Goos for my sock knitting. They're really sharp points and the cords are beautiful. They just 
like straight and stuff because they're a steel cable with a, like a nylon coating. So they're super slippery. Um, but the yarn or the, the cords don't have like a memory so they don't like kink up and tangle and stuff. And I, I hate that when they do that. The other day I pulled a pair of my Knit Picks ones out and it's supposed to have a 40 inch cord and they hung like this far because it was so kinked up and coiled and twisted on itself and it was like stuck that way. I was trying to knit whatever it was that I was trying to knit with it. It was making me angry. I actually almost threw them in the garbage because I was so angry at them. It's like stupid pieces of junk. And I like knit picks. It's just I don't like the plain plastic cords anymore. Now that I'm more experienced knitter and I want things that are fast and, you know, and you get what you pay for. And I don't like saying that in a flippant way because I love knit picks. Don't get me wrong. I love their most of their needles. I love the way their needles are. I don't love the cords. And they're cheap. Like, they're very inexpensive. and But I do know that you can get more expensive ones that are the same way, so it's not just because they're cheap. It's just it's just the material that they're made out of. It's just a plastic or a nylon cord. And I far prefer these other ones that have the steel cable inside. But I was going to share. So I kind of work into acquisitions now because I'm done with my knitting content since I've only got one, read, one project on the go and I finished two, but... Those chow goose are interchangeable chow, uh, interchangeable chow goose. So you can see there, boop, they got the little hole. So I treated myself because it was our anniversary, Tara and I anniversary for our shop. I treated myself to a set of chow goo interchangeables and I am beyond excited by them. Oh, I love them. So. These are a little bit on the pricey side, so if any of you are, you know, looking for budget stuff, these are not it, but I highly, highly, highly recommend them. So if you can save up, you know, your pennies, I would do it. Or ask it, you know, if people are wanting to gift you something, you know, maybe a few of your family members could get in toward, like, you know, pool together and get you a set. But what I really like about these, these are the small sets. So the Chow Goos come in different multiple size sets. Um, they have four inch tips and they have five inch tips. So I bought the five inch tip set in the small size. So the small size, and I open up, you get, a, you get a paper with how to use them and everything. But the small set comes with these. A US 2 to a US eight so most uh interchangeable sets that i've ever seen starts at start at a 3.5 and they go up to like a 10 and i very rarely use anything higher than a six so half of the interchangeable sets are completely useless to me because i never use anything heavier than a worsted and when i when i use a worsted i'm a loose knitter so I use about a 5, a 4.5 or a 5 millimeter. So to have a set that has half of the sizes bigger than that is pretty much useless. So I was really excited that these had the smaller size. It's like a 2.75 and an interchangeable set is pretty much unheard of. And yeah, so as you can see, I've already got the one set missing out there because I'm using it for my fade. That's a 3.5. So and then, but it also has, you know, all the slots all the way up to a US 15. So 5.5, 6, 6.5, 8, 9, and 10 millimeters. So I can fill in the gaps of my collection. Um, and so I have a whole set, but I likely won't. Maybe, maybe I'd get the US 9. Maybe. But I don't see the need right now. And then also right here. On this row below, you can see, there you go, you can see the stitches. So there's other pockets. So you can put extras in and stuff like that. So, yeah, I was really excited. So they, this is, like I said, the small set. Then there's the large set that goes from, probably fills up this size of, side of the bag. So it's probably the US 9s to US 15s for the large set. And then they also have a mini set, which is the, I think it says, triple zero to uh, US 1 and so it's all the itty bitty tiny like point like the one millimeter and the one the 1.25 the 1.5 1.75 to 2.5 uh, 
is the mini set. So it's for like socks and things like that, which I considered getting because I do love to knit the socks with my chow goos, but I already know that the only size I knit with it are the 2.0. So there's no point in me having a set because the chances of me using any of the other needles is pretty small. And when you're paying, like I said, they are an investment. Um, I'm not going to tell you how much I paid because I mean, I got a good deal on them. I got them on sale, but yeah, I'm not going to tell you how much I paid. <laughs> so, <laughs> but yeah, it comes in this really nice little case. It's really quite thin. And then all your little extras, you get all the things in the front pouch. So it came with, it comes with, comes with like a needle gauge and it comes with little stitch markers. And it comes with three cables, so 14 inch, 22 inch, and 30 inch. So I'm using the 30 inch, so I've got the two smaller ones in there. And it also comes with the, the, the comes with the connector right here, that little doodad right there, which won't focus. Don't look at my nails. Oh my goodness, my hands are so dry. Okay. So the little connector is, you know, so you can connect two cords together and then have one longer cord. Then this looks like a T-pin, which I'm pretty sure that's exactly what it is. They call it the tightening thing. So on the, on the cords, they've got a little hole. And so you stick the little pin in there and then it gives you some leverage for tightening your needles onto your, onto your thing. And then these ones, the little bars, they've got a little screw on them and they're the end caps. So if you want to take your needle off your off your cord or whatever, then you can do that and, and not have all your stitches slide off the end. So that all comes with the kit. And I've seen other ones come with like a little, uh, like a silicon mat that you can use to hold onto your needle. Mine didn't come with that. So I got stitch markers instead for whatever reason. So, so that was my gift to myself. And I'm really happy with them. But, you know, when you knit a lot, it's worth treating yourself to something that you know you need. Like, knitters need needles. And you need good needles. Otherwise, um, you're just ending up buying cheap needles over and over and over again. As they break or they get bent or the cords go crazy or something. So it's like, I'm firmly in the camp that you buy the best that you can afford. So... I had put off buying the chow goose for a long time, but I waited and waited and I watched the price and when it was a good price, then I jumped on it. So I recommend doing that. So also, I was in a very celebratory mood. <laughs> we made it a year! So I went shopping and I spent some fun money on a new project bag and some yarn. So um, I'm sure most of you have heard of her already, but it's Molly Klein Design. She has been making bags for ages and ages. Probably a good, well, I've known her for a couple of years now and she's always had bags in her shop. So I don't know how long she's been open. But anyways, she is, everybody seems to know who she is. But she recently, within the last, I don't know, six months, nine months or so, she started dyeing yarn. And I've been good, and I've been looking at her stuff, but I haven't pulled the trigger. And then she popped up one day, this colorway, and it was so cute, and so pretty, and it was called At The Hop. And immediately this song gets stuck in my head, because I used to listen to um, the American Graffiti soundtrack when I was a kid, and it's got that song on it. And I just love like songs from the 50s and stuff like that. So anyways, this yarn is called At The Hop. And it's this really pretty uh, mint and soft baby pink. Here's her tag. Sweet Tea Yarns by Molly Klein Design. And then cream. And then she's got all these like, beautiful speckles uh, throughout it. So anyways, oh, and it's really, really soft. So this is, I had to get this. And then because she's shipping it from the States, you can't, you can't ship one thing. It just, it doesn't make any sense shipping wise. If you're going to be paying for shipping, especially if it's flat rate, well, you always add something extra to your cart because that just makes perfect sense, right? So I bought myself a little project bag. 
So this is really cute. The color is kind of not true. It's, it's like a navy blue. And then there's mints and pinks. And so what's actually really fun is they're not paired together at all. They're just, I love this print and I love this. And when you put them together, they're totally a set. They're perfect together. Like this. So I love it. I haven't been using it because I wanted to show it on the podcast before it got all wrinkled up. But yeah, so it's really super cute. It's got this fun like turquoise zipper. And then she put uh, like a fun like vine print on the inside. So and it's got the gusset bottom. So it fits in. Let's see here. Here's my skein of yarn. And here's my other skein of yarn. So it fits two for sure, but there's a lot, plenty of room inside. Uh, you can never show how good these things are, but anyways, there's lots of room. Both of them together, there's still like three inches of space on the other side. So, so it's nice. So now I can start using my bag and winding up my yarn. I have no idea what this is going to become. They always look good in the stash, so it'll go in there until I decide what it's going to be when it grows up. And then I feel like a complete yarn pig. Oh my goodness. I've never had this much to share and I'm sorry, but I just got this today. I completely forgotten that I'd ordered it. I knew I had ordered something and then I got a card in the mail. I was like, what is it? It's more yarn. <laughs> So Cozy Knitter, the Cozy Knitter, Christina had an update a couple weeks back now. And I normally I don't buy when it's updates. It's usually so frenzied and crazy. So I always wait a couple of days and then I remembered, oh crap, Christina had had an update. And I was thinking for sure she would be sold out, especially of the colors that I wanted. And she wasn't. So either she died up a ton or people went for other colors this time. I don't know. But anyways, I found, got the colors that I wanted. So I was really excited. So this first one is called His and Hers. And it's like this bright blue, uh, like an aqua and a periwinkly navy-ish kind of blue, a soft, soft pink and a brighter pink. And then, like, the natural color of the wool. So, yeah, it's called His and Hers, and it's on her Bliss base, which is 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon, and 115 grams. And it's actually the same base that we use. And so I know it's a really nice and soft and squishy base, and it knits up beautifully. Um, and then this is the other one. And I've had my eye on this color since she released it. It wasn't originally a color that she released with. Uh, Sandy Ran of Sandy by the Lakeside. Um, she is, does beautiful project bags and they did a collab together and it was stunning. And I was going to buy one and I didn't press checkout fast enough and they were all gone. So this was kind of my elusive colorway. Of course, I want the bag too, but that'll never happen because, well, if you've ever been to Sandy's updates, you have to have trigger finger and I don't. So, but anyways, this is. This is that word, huga. So everybody's talking about that. And it's like the Danish and Norwegian feeling of comfort and comfortable and hominess and stuff like that. It's this word called, and Christina says, she is, she is from Denmark. So she knows what she's talking about. She says it's huga, 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 something like that. Anyways. So it's a super gorgeous tanny gold color, a soft baby blue, and a periwinkly color, and soft pink and cream, and it is stunning. And I don't know what I'm going to make with it, but it will be something, obviously. See, because that's the problem. I've got self-striping yarn, but I don't super love socks for myself. So will this become socks? Will it become, like, part of a sleeve? I don't know. A hat? I have no clue, but these two colors I've wanted for a while. And to get both of them at once, that was just, I was beside myself. I was like, oh, I can't even believe it. And I can't remember now what this is called. She had it written. Oh, here it is. This is the Cozy Up. Camel is this. 
this um, tan gold color. It's like a sand color. It's really beautiful. It's called Camel. And then this is just like her undyed natural base. So super gorgeous. And that's all I have today. I have more yarn coming, but I will show it on my next podcast. Yeah, this is enough yarn piggery <laughs> for today. And yeah, so I wanted to share some fabric stash that I got. And also, oh, before I'm going to do that, I wanted to show you guys way 100% or 100 years ago, I showed you a cross stitch uh, kit that my daughter had got, or I had purchased for her and hoping that she would like to cross stitch. And she does, she really enjoys it. And but last time she only had like three stitches done. So it wasn't enough to really show. But here, let me find the pattern. Sorry, should have had this. Oops, drop all the things on the floor. All the junk. I've got papers everywhere. Okay, so this is the pattern. It's a little bit, sorry, it's getting blown out. It's called Up, Up and Away. And it's by the Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery. And it's this super adorable. It's really so tiny, obviously, like this is blown up. So, but it's a little bunny rabbit in a hot air balloon. Little birds and stuff like that. And then all the polka dots in behind, that's actually the fabric that they chose to use, like to stitch on. So we're just doing hers on white. But this is her cross stitch. So she's 10, so I'm like beyond impressed. You know, she's got pretty even stitching for being 10. And I made a mistake when we first cast her on, or cast her on. When I first got her started, like put the first few stitches in, I just assumed that there was an odd amount of stitches there at the top, three, but there was in the pattern, it only called for two. So her balloon is one, one stitch wider. And that's not a big deal at all. Like, I was like, oh, nobody will notice. Just go ahead and finish. So she was like, well, we didn't realize that until it was like down to like here when she was doing the pink and she didn't want to tear it all out. So I'm like, oh, it's fine. Just, just stitch away. Well, there's a bunny hanging underneath it. So we, I had to re-graph the bottom half of here to make the bunny and the basket so that it was symmetrical. So it wasn't like one stitch out because that would have been obvious. So I've got a whole other graph paper that has a totally different chart. So the bunny looks exactly the same. It's just he's only going to have one stitch for his nose instead of two and a couple other little changes. But other than that, nobody will ever know. So, so yeah, you're not allowed to tell anybody. It's a secret. But anyways, I'm really super excited for her and proud of her. She's doing really good with her little cross stitch. So super duper adorable. And then my other little daughter, she's seven, and, well, she's going to be seven next month, but she's six. Oh, where's her cross stitch? Oh, did she take it to her room? Oh, no, here it is. So she's been asking because she sees her older sister doing it, so she wanted some. So I was like, okay, I can, but I have to, I just found, like, a little, like, perler bead chart or something or a cross stitch chart on Pinterest, just, like, a little freebie, nothing too complicated, and then I bought really big Ada. So, like, Avalon's is on a 16-count Ada, I think. So the squares are a little bit smaller. But Laura's is on an 11-count Ada. So you can see the size difference. But, yeah, this is her first cross stitch. It's this cute little flamingo. So it's pretty big. I did four threads for each square. So it's, like pretty chunky but I mean when you're six you need that you need to be able to see where you're going and have something to actually substantial to hold on to but yeah so I was really impressed with her and she's so cute because the pattern didn't call for any water but she wanted it standing in some water so she took some creative liberties and she hacked her <laughs> she hacked her cross stitch pattern so there's that and so now she's working on I've got another one on the hoop for her but you can't tell it all what it is yet it's just the start, so it'll be a kitty, and they'll be really cute when it's done. So, yeah, that's my kids' project. So I wanted to take a ch moment and just brag them up a little bit because I'm really impressed with their their craftiness. And I used to cross-stitch, too, when I was little, and I still do, but not nearly as much as I used to. But, yeah, I really 
they love it. It's like, you know, and it's nice that they have something um, tangible to work on. And, you know, because I've tried teaching them to knit and Avalyn hates it. And Alora likes it, but she loses interest. And she's actually kind of lost interest in the cross-stitching it right now, too. But eventually she'll get back at it, I'm sure. But, yeah. So that's, so that's that work in progress. And so then I just wanted to share some fabric that I've got. So um, over the last little bit, I've kind of been, I've always wanted to learn how to quilt and I never have uh, taken the time and I really, really, really want to learn how. And so I've got a few friends that do it and um, they've been kind of like, I don't know, not pushing me or anything, obviously, because it's I want to, but encouraging me, I guess I should say. And so, yeah, it's another da rabbit hole to go down. So this one this is actually an accidental purchase, <laughs> and it truly was an accident. I'm not lying. It wasn't like, oh, I accidentally checked out. <laughs> Silly me. No, this was, I have joined a, um, like a stash of the month club from Fabric Snob, the, fa the Fabric Snob.ca or something like that. And after a few months, I didn't want to be part of the club anymore. So I contacted them and they said, oh, you just have to go into your settings and, and turn off or like, you can't really stop it, but you have to go in and say like, no, I don't want this month. No, I don't want this, this month. So I did that and it's 10 months in advance. So I haven't gotten anything for 10 months. And then one day an envelope popped up and here's because like, you know, if you say no to April, well, it'll automatically start in May. So I said no to like all of 2017's, the rest of them. Well, 2018's a new year and I got, I got a new shipment. So I, I got this package. I'm like, why do I have this? So I've since gone in and like disabled all the rest of them for 2018, but I'm going to have to do that again for 2019. So I'll probably get another mystery package at the beginning of next year. So I don't know. I'll probably have to just contact them and just somehow get them to disable it because I was kind of annoyed actually. But anyways, the fabric is beautiful, so I'm not going to return it. It's more hassle than it's worth. And it was not a like massively expensive purchase, but I'm going to make dolly clothes. I'm pretty sure because these are really super tiny little prints and it's perfect for doll clothes because sometimes you get fabric and it's got too big of a print. It's not going to work for dolly clothes, but they both have those 18 inch dolls, um, maple Lee dolls. Um, they're like an American girl doll, but my girls play with them a lot. So I'm going to make some doll clothes for them. So this is the one print. It's really cute. But you see how tiny that print is, right? So it's really good for a little shirt or something. So that's fabric number one. This is number two, and it's these cute little flowers. Number three is like a little sketch and dash and dots. And then this little floral. Then this polka dots, which is really super sweet. So these are all fat quarters. So there's a substantial amount of, of fabric here. And then some hearts with a little bit of like scallop. So that one's really sweet too. So I'm like I said, I'm not disappointed. I'm just, it was kind of annoying to find out that my card had been charged and stuff and I didn't know. So and thankfully, I like the fabric. <laughs> if I didn't like the fabric, I would have been far more annoyed. And then that's the last one. So super, super cute. I'm happy with them. I will use them. I'm just glad that they weren't, you know, kind of ugly. Not that fabric is ugly, but you know, like if something's not your style, and what do you do with all the all the fabric? So. So there's that. So I think I'm going to make some doll clothes. And then, unfortunately for me, I have a favorite yarn shop in Saskatoon. It's called Prairie Chicks. And it's all these modern, they are very like modern prints. Absolutely beautiful store. Like the prettiest quilt shop I've ever been in in my life. Just, oh, I love it so much. And anyways, unfortunately, the ho the owner of the of the company has been quite ill for a couple of years, I guess. And she's been holding her own with her illness plus owning the business. But I guess now her health is 
either declining or something. She didn't really go into it. But anyway, she says she needs to focus on her health. She couldn't do both. So she decided to close her shop and she was going to sell it. And so I was like, okay, it's just temporarily closing. But I guess the sale has fallen through and so they will not be a reopening. So their last day is March 24th or something like that. So they've been having fairly steep discounts. So I've been able to go in and buy some beautiful things, but it's, it's bittersweet. I go in and I buy to support her and help her blow through her inventory, but it's sad at the same time. It doesn't feel like a happy purchase. It's a sad purchase because you know that they're closing and her heart's broken because it's not what she ever wanted. You know, she said it was a dream of hers to open a quilt shop for her whole life. And she's had it open for a few years, but now she has to close. So, yeah. And the staff is, you can tell that they're quite sad too. And anyways, I've taken advantage <laughs> and I have bought some things, but um, where is my first thing? Actually, be right before they announced that they were closing, like literally two or three days before, they had brought in... Or maybe about a week before they had announced that they were closing, they had brought in a new line by Kate, I think it's Moda, and it's by Kate Spain, and it's, an, oh shoot, I don't remember the name of this line, but anyways, they had brought in a whole, all the bolts, like all the line of this, and I thought it was absolutely beautiful, and I, can I make a quilt for my daughter, and I was hoping that they had a jelly roll, and they didn't have jelly rolls, but they were sweet enough that they cut me the yardage I needed to make a jelly roll. So, I mean, they were, that's why I loved about them. They bent over backwards to make you a happy customer. And so this, this is the, the colors. So I'm gonna have to reorganize these so that they look nice together. But it's all these blues and teals. Um, kind of like Mediterranean inspired like this looks like tile and then there's pops of pink and orange and this like medallion and these ones are kind of fun I really like this one and then all these beautiful blues so anyways yeah I just I said oh do you guys have jelly rolls and they said no we don't have jelly rolls but we'll cut them so this is like a five and a half inch strip that, that they had cut right off the bolt so all I have to do is just cut it in half lengthwise. And then I would have a, they gave it, they were a little generous with their, with their yardage. So this is like a jelly roll strip is two and a half inches long by the length of the width of fabric. So 44 inches ish. So this is folded in half. So this is about 22 inches. Then it's doubled over. So it's a 44 inch bolt. And this is, this is probably close to six inches. So they gave me enough for straightening my edges. So I just have to cut two and a half inch strips from all of these. And then I'm going to make a jelly roll race quilt, just the same as I made for Alora. But yeah, like it's really sweet. So I bought this and then a couple days later they said that they were going to be closing. Mm, here we go. So I could have got this on a discount if I would have, you know, waited two or three days, but I am fully happy to have paid full price for it because well, I don't always need a deal. But anyways, really happy with that. So there's a quilt for Avalyn. And so the next time I went in after buying this, I bought some support fabric for it because the Jelly Roll Race quilt top isn't quite twin size and I want twin size for my girls. So I bought this, which is from this line. So I have one of those in here. It's right there. So I bought more of it to make either binding or like border strips. And then yesterday when I was in, I bought three yards of this pink because I'm going to make like the bigger borders for it because there's just a wee bit of pink in this, you know, like, so it's just, I talked to one of the ladies at the quilt shop there and she said that pulling the pink in is actually perfect because there's just little hints of it through here. So it'll make the pink pop in the in the fabric colors and stuff like that. So she said it would be it would be perfect. So I'm like, oh good, because I know nothing about quilting. But I'm glad to know that, you know, 
it's really similar to like how you would pair up your yarns and stuff like that so a little bit of color play but I really like this because it's like this grungy spongy kind of paint effect it's beautiful but so I'm excited to get Avalyn's quilts started so those are her fabrics and then I've already made the quilt top for Alora's and I keep forgetting I'm gonna just have to post a picture of it but um it's also Kate Spain fabric which is why I thought this one was perfect because they are similar feel but totally different color palettes but I got some polka dot it's like a robin egg blue polka dot for Alora's either binding or binding or border something and then I have for myself I bought a fat quarter or a fat eighth bundle of a line also through Moda called Sweet Marion and so I bought this fabric to go with it for same thing borders or bindings and stuff like that and that quilt will be for me I'm not sure how big it will be if it'll be lap size or twin size or just snuggle on the couch size I'm just gonna make something out of it because I really love that entire line this line of fabric the sweet Marion was what inspired my girl next door colorway that we have in our midnight craving shop so it's extra special I really love it and then for Laura's quilt I bought I bought this it's a white with little blue or little soft soft gray feathers I thought it would look pretty with the quilt top that I got for her so whoop, why is it all there we go so yeah you can see the feathers there so I bought that yesterday and then the other day when I was in I bought big honking fat quarter stack for myself and for my husband I would like to eventually make a queen size quilt out of these I haven't popped her open yet just as beautiful so they in-house make like the fat quarter bundles and stuff like that they very rarely bring in the bundles from from the line they just bring in all the bolts and then they cut it themselves but I really love it so it's like these geometric prints just really subtle like so this one's got a wavy print so I thought it's not floral and it's not girly but it's you know it's really new good neutral and it would match in our bedroom really beautifully so I'm looking forward to, I'm not exactly sure what what I will be making with that yet but something and I bought a pattern too but I forgot it over on the counter and I'm not gonna go get it so yeah I got myself a few things so I've got some projects to do I've got two quilts to do for my girls and I've got a project quilt for me and one for my husband and I so that's four I think I should be good but I will be going back to Prairie Chicks next week <laughs> Every week they drop down the discount and their store is clearing out quite fast now, but I probably should get some like really pretty stuff for bags and things, but I don't know. I just haven't, I just keep buying fabric for quilts and I haven't even made one yet. So I guess I better get on that. Like I've got a Laura's quilt top done, so I will eventually have a quilt and I'm going to have my friends help me with the binding and the stuff like that. So well, shall see. It might look horrible, but it'll be my first, so I can't expect it to be perfect. So, <laughs> but anyways, I guess that's all I have for you guys today. So a little, just a little bit of knitting content and a lot of um, hoarding, but I don't do that very often, so I'll give myself a pass this week. But I guess I should go. My kids are going to be home. It's 2:45, and they get home at 3:15. So I guess I better get my button gear and get ready for them. And yeah. So we'll talk to you guys again soon. See ya.